Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Education Station with Blank Park Zoo. Uh, we have another special guest with you here today. My name is Jared. I'm going to tell you some cool things about him. And my name is Keisha, and I am going to go ahead and read all of your comments and questions so that Jared can answer those for you. And while he's getting our friend out, um, just make sure that you're tuning in, and if you've missed any previous ones, um, they should all be posted on our Facebook page. And I think we're ready to go. So this is Scoots. Scoots is a nine-banded armadillo. And there's a lot of really interesting things about Scoots, but the thing that I'm gonna start with is how Scoots protects himself. So everybody knows that armadillos have this very, very, very hard back, and Scoots is no different. He's got all of these different Scoots that help keep him really safe. And what a lot of people think that all armadillos do when they get scared is curl up into a really small ball. Scoots can't do that, so Scoots, like I said, is a nine-banded armadillo, so he's got nine of these bands back here. The ones that do roll into a ball when they're scared are three-banded armadillos, so they only have three, so they're smaller, more compact, than able to roll into that ball. Scoots mostly keeps himself safe um, just kind of by hunkering down in the ground. He can dig really fast. He gets himself wedged down in the ground where you can't get him out, um, and all you can get to is his tough armored back. But in a worst case scenario, Scoots protects himself just by jumping four feet in the air, which four feet might not sound like that much, but for such a small animal, a four foot vertical is pretty crazy. And it's enough to startle animals and make them kind of think twice about trying to eat something like Scoots. So another kind of interesting thing about <laughs> uh, Scoots at the zoo is that armadillos are a nocturnal animal. So Scoots typically is awake uh, at night when we're asleep and running around doing all the things he needs to do, eating, digging, searching for whatever he's gotta find. But here at the zoo, Scoots lives on kind of a backwards light cycle a little bit. So um, right now in Scoots' room, all of the lights are turned off, so it's dark. And the reason that's super important is so uh, if we want to do something with Scoots, Scoots is awake. If he was just sleeping here, he would be much more boring. So it helps us um, strictly for program's sake. But it's also really helpful for Scoots' health. So um, if Scoots was sleeping while we were at work, like normal nocturnal animals would be, then we wouldn't ever be able to see if he's not feeling well or hurt or walking kind of funny. If you hurt your leg, you kind of limp a little bit. But if Scoots is sleeping, we're never gonna see if he's limping. We're never gonna see if, her, if his leg or his foot is hurt. So um, that kind of backwards light cycle is really important to keep Scoots healthy and it, it really helps with programs. Like I said, him sleeping would be pretty, pretty dull. Do we have any questions rolling in yet, Keisha? Yeah, so Sarah would like to know, are there any other types of armadillos um, other than the one that Scoots is? So yeah, there's tons of different kinds of armadillos. There's nine-banded armadillos like Scoots. Um, you can actually find nine-banded armadillos in the United States, usually down where it's a little uh, warmer. You can see that Scoots doesn't really have much for fur to keep him warm when it gets cold in Iowa here. Um, but so down farther south, there's tons of armadillos. Like I said, the um, three-banded armadillos that can curl up into a ball. There are giant armadillos. There are uh, pink fairy armadillos that are like this big. There are screaming hairy armadillos. So there's all kinds of different kinds of armadillos. Um, at the zoo, we only have Scoots, our nine-banded armadillo, and Alejandro, our six-banded. Mm -hmm. All right, and Charlie would like to know how strong is his shell? So his back is really, really, really tough. Um, not quite, you know, turtle shell hard, but it's, it's, it's pretty tough. I like to say that it kind of feels like a basketball when you're feeling it. It's like a basketball that's got a little, a little bit harder underneath of it. So um, if you look down by his legs, you can always kind of see that it moves a little bit. So I think that it kind of has the, the strength of maybe like a fingernail because you can bend fingernails, but they're still pretty tough. Um, and his, his, his back is made out of the same stuff that our fingernails are, that keratin. And so it has to be able to flex and move around with him. So it'd be pretty much kind of like having to try to bite through your fingernail, which um, you know isn't something that a lot of animals really want to do. Hmm. All right, Seth would like to know, 
Um, how sharp are his claws? So his claws are not as sharp as, you know, like a, a cat or um, some of those other hunting uh, animals. All Scoots eats is bugs, so his claws just have to be strong. So when he, when he turns around, you can probably see his toes. He's got some big nails. They're not the sharpest thing, but they are powerful. He can get himself dug underground in a matter of minutes. So um, he can dig very, very fast to find those bugs, but he doesn't need those sharp claws to catch bugs. Instead, he uses a pretty long tongue and a really great nose. Uh, you can see Scoots is still trying to sniff around for the bugs that we had out here earlier. Uh, Scoots' nose is actually so strong that he can smell bugs feet underground and then dig down to find them. So um, his claws aren't the sharpest thing, but they are very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and how strong would he be going off of that? So... Like if he were to get stuck, um, dig himself into a hole, how easy would it be to get him out? It's not easy. Uh, Scoots likes to dig holes. That's one of his favorite things to do when you bring him out to the zoo um, where he can kind of dig and show off for people. He always tries to bury himself. and. It's hard for me to get him out. I'm six foot one, 200 some pounds. I'm a big guy, but Scoots is strong enough that he can get himself dug into the ground and he locks his feet in kind of like an anchor. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to get him pulled out. And I have to be really, really careful that I'm not just yanking because I'll hurt myself because he's so strong. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, there is another question here, which we get all the time uh, from Victoria. Do they bite? And so, how would that look? <laughs> anything with a mouth can always bite. Um, we don't look enough like bugs for Scoots to really bite us, and since all Scoots eats is bugs, um, he doesn't need the strongest teeth. You know, lions and tigers have crazy sharp teeth because they're taking down these big, big prey animals. But if you look at um, animals like rabbits, they've got strong teeth that are just meant for chopping stuff up. Scoots hardly has much for teeth at all because bugs are easy to eat. Um, you can just kind of crunch him up with a hard mouth, so he doesn't need those big, strong teeth. So it would feel uh, more like a pinch than anything else, but it would not be nearly as bad as, as most other animals here at the zoo. All right, and then Bethany would like to know how fast can he eat? So he's a very fast eater. Uh, our armadillos both are, are pretty fast eaters. Um, I don't even know how long we've been live. I had some big bugs out here and he gobbled those up real fast. Anytime we feed him crickets in his enclosure, he just hunts them down, snarfs them down really, really quickly. So he eats and can get through food very, very quickly uh, once he gets hungry and once he gets going. All right, there we go. Um, so Katie would like to know, do they have a tail when they are born? So they do have a tail when they're born. Um, they look pretty similar to this when they are born, honestly. Um, they're a little, a little pinker and not quite as sturdy, but they do have a tail when they're born. Um, if we think about what's inside of a tail, he's got bones all through his tail and it just comes straight down his backbone. So if we follow our backbone, it stops at our legs, but his doesn't. His backbone just goes from his head all the way down his tail. So he has all those bones when he's born. Um, he just looks maybe a little pinker mm -hmm. when he's a baby. All right, and then Katie also would like to say that he lo she loves his ears, and do they hear well? He does hear super well. So if you look at Scooch, you can tell a lot of things about him. He's got a big old nose, so you know he can smell. He's got some pretty big ears for his size, so he can hear pretty well too, but his eyes aren't very big at all. And that's because he's awake at night. It's dark at night and he doesn't, he doesn't need to see if he can smell everything, he can hear everything. Seeing's not very important, so he devoted a lot of um, kind of development into his ears and his nose, but his eyes weren't that important for him. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got a good question for Renee, and she asks, how did Scoots get to Blank Park Zoo? Scoots is one of my favorite stories uh, of any of the animals in the education department. So Scoots um, is one of the very few animals at the zoo that did come from the wild. All of the wild animals are some sort of rehabbed animal, and Scoots is no different. But Scoots um, wasn't hurt or anything. He uh, was a native from Florida, and he lived near a zoo in Florida. 
And if you've ever been talking to anybody from the South where they have armadillos, they do not like them. They treat them a lot like we treat raccoons and possums, which is way worse than we should. That's a whole different thing. Um, so Scoots wasn't a crowd favorite uh, down in Florida, but he would always dig his way into the zoo because he loved being around people. He loved checking out what was going on. And if he got into the zoo, when those people who don't like him are around, they're not going to be very nice to him. So the zoo people took him and put him back outside the zoo, and he used those strong claws and dug his way under the zoo. And this happened a few times before they said, okay, he's going to get hurt if he keeps trying to be around people. Um, so it wasn't safe for him to live in the wild anymore. So they sent him to a zoo where we love armadillos. We don't have the same problems with them here that they do in the south. So Scoots is one of the very few wild-caught animals because he was too friendly for his own good in the wild. Yeah, I was wouldn't even call him caught. He just... Yeah, he, he was just hanging out with yeah, people. Yeah, he just loved to be around people. And he still continues um, to love being around people today and mm. just kind of getting pampered like he does. Yeah, he is a, he is a sweetheart. Yes. All right, so um, Nora would like to ask, do they make any noises? I don't think I've really ever heard him make any noises. He makes noises when he eats, but about any animal makes noises when he eats, and it's just the sounds of his mouth. Um... <laughs> But I haven't ever heard him chirp or chuff or growl or any, anything that you think about with other animals. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Emily would like to know how fast they run. So they can run about 30 miles an hour, believe it or not. So he can get scooting. Um, no pun intended. It's a different spelling of the word. Um, but uh, he can run very fast for such a small animal, about 30 miles an hour. Yep. And then Bethany would like to know, um, how big is his tummy? So um, his back comes down about this far off of him. So um, everything really from here up is kind of all of his body. That, that shell just kind of goes over the edges. His body's very soft. He does have hair down there. Um, he doesn't really like being picked up very much, or I'd show you. That's why I kind of just let him hang out and run around here. But... Um, Kind of what you see is what you get with him. All right, and then Cassie would like to know, is he full grown? He is full grown. Scoots is about um, eight years old, so he's not really gonna get much bigger than this. Um, but yeah, yeah. so his, this is about as big as, as, as big as he is gonna get. All right, um, Mallory's watching and she would like to know, does he smell bad? One of the nice perks about virtual programs and doing this uh, over Facebook is that he smells very bad. Uh, it's just kind of a natural thing with, with our armadillos. They just are stinky animals. A lot of animals smell bad. He smells very bad. Um, but it's just kind of the way he is. All right. Susan would like to know what happens when his tail, uh, to his tail when it, he rolls up. So he, like I said earlier, doesn't, can't roll up into a complete ball. Um, the three-banded armadillos can, uh, and when they roll up into a ball, they've got a little armor piece over their head, and their tail kind of fits, fits together like a nice little puzzle. Um, Scoots doesn't roll up. He's just too big and long. Um, a lot of people will catch armadillos by their tails, which is not a good thing. Like I said earlier, it's, it's part of his backbone, so it would be kind of just like pulling on your backbone. So it's not a super great thing um, to pull on any animal's tail, but he doesn't really worry about animals trying to grab it when, when they're trying to get at him. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Cassie would also like to know where is he normally located in the zoo? So Scoots and all the other animals you've seen on Education Station or Zoo Creates, um, they live behind the scenes in our education department. So um, their job normally is to travel with people like Keisha and I off-site, uh, and we go talk to senior centers and daycares and libraries and anybody all over the state of Iowa um, just to bring the zoo to them. And so uh, if we're going out and we're talking to hundreds of, of loud, screaming people, every day and they come back to the zoo where there's thousands of loud people every day, then they would never get a break. So they live behind the scenes where they can kind of get the rest they need. If they've had an easy week or an easy day, a lot of times you will see them come out to Critter Corner, which is kind of right outside our gift shop door. Um, so that's where our education animals go to kind of stretch their legs. But he's not an animal you would see just running around the zoo like our, our peacocks or our lions. Yep. So we'll get to um, one last question here, um, and then we will finish up for today. So does he feel in his shell? 
So he does have a feeling uh, in his show. To us, he said he feels kind of like a basketball. Um, but like I said, it's, it's made out of that carrot and kind of like our fingernails. So you do have some sensitivity there. It's not as much as touching like the bottom of your finger as the top. Um, so it is a little bit reduced, but he can for sure feel it. Um, it's, it's a part of his body. The only time that you can't really feel a lot of those things is with hair. And if you, can, if you touch hair, you can usually feel that it moves against your scalp. So there's not much that he really can't feel despite having this big uh, kind of protected armor over him. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and let Jared um, put Scoots away. He's looking a little chilly, like he said before. Um, he's not used to colder climates, and for some reason, this week is a little chillier than we've ha been having. So Scoots is going to go back into his warm crate, and we just want to thank you so much for coming to all of these lives and asking us all these questions. We love it. We love answering, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye.